I rolled up in here about 10 minutes ago. That other guy was here working on this problem. You know that guy who makes those math counts videos? He's trying to find the probability that three randomly drawn numbers between zero and one have a sum that is less than one. And he's trying to solve this problem by making a list. Can you believe that? He's got a piece of paper out he's making a list of all the possible outcomes. I'm like, man, what are you doing? Why are you making a list? And he says, well, I got to count all of the possible outcomes because that's what you do in a probability problem. And I said, yeah, man, that's what you do in a probability problem when you can count all the possible outcomes. You can't count all the possible outcomes here because there are infinitely many ways to choose three numbers between zero and one. Guy looks at his list, looks up, looks at his list. He's like, uh-oh, you're right. I can't count these. What am I going to do? Then I laid it on him. I'm like, dude, man, you can't count them, but you can measure them. That freaked him out a little bit. Starts looking around for a ruler. Measure them. Measure them. How do I measure them? You use geometry. Man, when I said geometry, man, his face just, he got all excited. He got all excited. And then he said, I got to go get Harvey. And he ran out of the room. That kind of confused me because I don't know who Harvey is. But while he's off finding that Harvey dude, I'm going to solve this problem. Now here's how I'm going to start. I'm going to start by forgetting about that three randomly drawn numbers. I'm going to start off with two because maybe you haven't ever seen anything like this before. So three numbers kind of freaks you out. Let's start with two. We're going to start with just two randomly drawn numbers between zero and one. Now I'm going to call those numbers X and Y. So we're going to take an X and Y randomly drawn between 0 and 1. Now as soon as we say X and Y, we start thinking, where have we seen X and Y two numbers before? Coordinate planes. So we're going to draw a picture of what's going on here. And that's what I like to do when I have infinitely many possibilities. Because geometry has great tools for measuring infinite sets of points. We can use length. Just this little segment right here, right there. It's got infinitely many points, but we can measure it. We can find its length. And we also have area. So let's try to use that. Put x here. Put y here. We're going to say this is 0. We'll call this 1. We'll call this 1. And this x and y are between 0 and 1. That means x is between 0 and 1. That means y is between 0 and 1. That means... The combination of x and y, that represents a point that is in this square. And we can measure that square with area. That square has area 1. So we found the area of our possible region. It's 1. Well, now what's our desired region? We want the sum of these numbers to be less than 1. We want x plus y less than 1. Well, where is that in this picture? We'll start off with x plus y equals 1. x plus y equals 1, that's just a line. That's this line right here. x plus y less than 1, that's everything below the line. It's everything down here. So our desired region is this little triangle right here, this right triangle with legs of length 1. Its area is 1 times 1. You take half of that, you get 1 half. That's our desired region area. Take our desired area, divide by our possible area, that's the whole square. You get 1 half, because 1 half divided by 1 is 1 half. So the probability over here is a half. And now we're ready to think about three randomly drawn numbers. Now when we were tackling two numbers, we had x, we had y, but we've got a third number now, so we've got z, just like that. That's right, we're still going to be working with coordinates here, but now we're going 3D. Let's go ahead and draw a picture. We've still got our x, our y, but now we've got a z. And we still want these three numbers, this x, y, and z. We want them all to be between 0 and 1. So we'll call this 1, we'll call this 1, and we'll put 1 right up there. We need x, y, and z all to be between 0 and 1. So we need x between 0 and 1, y between 0 and 1, z between 0 and 1. Well, over here we had a square. We're in 3D. Now we got a cube. This is our possible region. 
this is the cube of all points for which x, y, and z are all between 0 and 1. Now over here we used area to measure our possible region. Here we're in 3D now, we're using volume. The volume of this cube, well, all the sides, all the edges have length 1. The volume of that cube is 1. So now we got to deal with what's the desired region. Where do we have x plus y plus z less than 1? Where does that happen? We'll start off with x plus y plus z equals 1. Well, if x is 1 and y and z are 0, we're right there. If y is 1 and x and z are 0, we're right over there. And if x and y are 0, then z is 1. It's right up there. Well, now let's take a look at what happens when z is 0 and x and y can vary, but x plus y has to equal 1. Well, that's a line. We had that right over there. It's this line right there. And that's where z is 0, so we're down here in the xy plane, and x plus y equals 1. And then when y is 0, we have x plus z has to be 1. And then when x is 0, y plus z has to be 1. We build this triangle right here. And this triangle is part of a whole plane where x plus y plus z equals 1. But we want x plus y plus z to be less than 1. So we got to go below this plane. We got to go back towards the origin back there where they're all 0. So we want everything under there. That's our desired region. It's got these three sides of this triangle as edges, and then back here, these parts of the z-axis, the y-axis, and the x-axis. This is our desired region. It's a pyramid. It's a pyramid. The base is right here. It's a right triangle with legs of length 1, so its area is 1 half. The height of this pyramid is going right up here. That height is 1, so to find the volume of that pyramid, we take the area, that 1 half, we multiply by the height, that's 1, then we take 1 third of that product. That gives us 1 sixth. So our desired volume there is 1 sixth out of a possible volume of 1. 1 sixth divided by 1, that gives us a probability of 1 sixth. And we've used geometry to solve this probability problem. Hey, oh, hey man. You come in here, help me out here, I'm already done. Oh, what's your name, man? Oh, you're Harvey, you're Harvey, good to see you, nice to meet you. That other dude was looking for you, he said he needed your, oh, he sent you back here, he sent you, oh, I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, it's a nice problem, it's a nice problem, it's pretty, isn't it, yeah, you see it too. Yeah, it's cool, man. Look, I gotta help, I gotta hop, I gotta bounce, I'm rolling, uh, help that other dude when he gets back, all right, all right, yeah, thanks, cool. Catch you later.